Hey guys, Drifter here. The Black Ops Cold War beta has been very rough, especially on me. I think that my frustrations with it are slowly turning me into a toxic creator. So today, I wanted to turn all of that around and focus on some positive, constructive criticism for Black Ops Cold War. And the best thing about a beta is that there's still time to fix some things before the game is released. So in today's video, I'm going to discuss in great detail what I think went wrong with this game from alpha to beta, and then of course some helpful suggestions on how to fix it. But first, I wanted to tell you that I want you to all try to stay mentally healthy this fall. There are a lot of stressors out there like COVID quarantine and the tumultuous elections coming up, which in no uncertain terms do make me really nervous. And I always take one hour of my day to go exercise and work out if it's running, if it's weightlifting, or even just like in-home cardio. Just something to clear my head. It's great for my mind and my overall mental health. And a great segue into today's sponsor. Oh, hi. I play Raid Shadow Legends every single day while doing pull-ups. Just like this. Uh, see, I just like to hang out, fight the spirit boss, kind of, you know, in between my set. Today's video is sponsored by one game, Raid Shadow Legends, but there's two different ways to play it. You can play it on mobile or cross-play with PC. There are 10 different challenging dungeons, which I also have not completed, still kind of working my way through that. 12 different campaign locations that'll take you to various parts in their fictional lore. 13 powerful factions, dwarves, elves, humans, undead, demon spawn, my personal favorite, and just gobs of champions. I can't keep track of how many champions. There are 200,000 clans. I'm in a clan with prestigious key and 25 million players worldwide with nearly unlimited customization and endless strategies where I try to tilt everything to my advantage. What you're seeing right now is actually a highlight of me live streaming Raid Shadow Legends from my PC and what I'm doing is playing PvP and using my demon spawns less than fair abilities to kind of plow through some people. Just this month, Raid Shadow Legends added the Artifact Forge, where you can craft new items and new champions, and the Doom Tower, which is sort of an ultra hard mode challenge, is coming very soon, which I'm excited about. If you sign up to play Raid Shadow Legends with the link below in the description, you will get 100,000 silver, one energy refill, 10 mystery shards, and a free champion, the Slasher, which will help you on your early game journeys. I wish I could get these myself, but I cannot because I'm an old player. After you've clicked my link below and downloaded the game, gone through the tutorial, all of your rewards, gold, silver, champions, goodies will be in this little box in the upper right hand corner. So what are you waiting for? Download Raid Shadow Legends today. <laughs> oh god. That was not what I meant to happen. Okay, we're gonna do that one more time. It's disgusting. Okay, now that Raid Shadow Legends is done, let's talk about the Black Ops Cold War beta. I think the Black Ops Cold War beta went wrong because of some unintended consequences of well-meaning changes. A video game isn't exactly like a series of sliders or knobs where you just move one and down and the other one up and it kind of balances somewhere in the middle. Instead, it's a super complex and complicated series of systems that all have to work together and can have sometimes chaotic outputs. Small changes in a system as complicated as a video game with all these thousands of lines of code and math going on that you don't see can have massive rippling effects that create unpredictable outcomes. This is commonly thought of as chaos theory, where somewhat seemingly random systems can be determined by certain laws depending on their initial conditions, and that's basically what we're talking about is the initial conditions being changed. And I want to talk about all of these well-intentioned changes that kind of went wrong. Starting with number one, the biggest issue for me right now is the lag. Uh, in no uncertain terms, the Black Ops Cold War beta is very laggy and very inconsistent for the majority of players. Some players do fine though, they really do. Some players do absolutely fine, they haven't had any lag or stutters or anything, but from what I'm seeing on Twitter and from other content creators, it seems to be more laggy than not laggy. And I don't think that this is a simple matter of a lag compensation adjustment. It's not a switch that they turned on and off. I mean, that's possible, but I don't really think that's the problem. I was one of the people that complained about the bullets going around corners in the alpha. I wasn't super happy with the connections, like it was passable, but it wasn't really on the good end of things. And I asked for Treyarch to change some things, and boy did they ever, but I, I kind of wish I hadn't. I, I don't, my, well my opinion doesn't really matter that much, but I, <laughs> I kind of want the old system back. That would be nice. Uh, I'm assuming what happened is that Treyarch decided to make some changes to both the servers and the lag compensation themselves. 
I know that they adjusted the tick rates on the servers to drop the combined ARM servers down to 20 hertz, whereas they were 60 hertz for the alpha. The base game servers like 6v6 is all going to be 60 hertz or it's supposed to be. I think it's possible that Activision could have chosen a different hosting company or client, or perhaps that company upgraded to brand new physical devices that somehow aren't particularly compatible with this beta. And it's possible that Treyarch tinkered with lag compensation in order to achieve some kind of design goal, because I'm sure they had some sort of metric somewhere of like player satisfaction or which uh, the attacker or defender it's supposed to prefer. And all of these things could have changed in that small amount of time. I don't know exactly which one, but whatever combination of things changed, we the players are now mostly lagging and it's mostly sort of like desync or shoot first, die first kind of lag. There's a lot of gunfights where I will start shooting somebody and they kind of don't really take much damage and then I just die. Or, but conversely, when I round the corner, I just get picked and get kind of blown up instantly. I feel like I pretty much have to shoot people in the back to kill them. I'm unable to win many gunfights. Sometimes it feels like other players are a few seconds ahead of me, which is very, very frustrating. And this is the most common type of lag that I see reported in the community as well, is that the gunfights don't really make sense because you're dying after getting three shots in before the other person even does anything. And whatever happened, I think it needs to be fixed before full release because I cannot play a game that lags like this for a year. I will actually lose my mind as a suggestion, the simplest one, I would roll back whatever lag compensation Treyarch made to whatever was on in the alpha. Alpha had its problems. I complained about those problems. I prefer those problems over the problems we have now. And I think that they need to adjust the server tick rates to have 60 hertz for all modes, including combined arms, especially combined arms, because combined arms can get really, really choppy. 60 hertz servers across all modes, while it costs more money, would greatly improve the player experience. Number two is related to number one, which is lag causes inconsistent player movement. When I play, I can often see people skip around or kind of randomly speed up really fast. Sometimes they stutter step, sometimes it looks like they freeze and drop a few frames and continue. A lot of the times it's a little bit subtle, like a freeze in the animation, but I do see it and I see them slide instead of moving. My teammates will do it, my enemies will do it. There are other times, however, where if the enemy will skip while they're knee sliding, it actually looks like they have rocket skates on or something, or they zip across the map, or all of a sudden they'll start running super duper fast, like, like they're just totally cracked out and you almost can't see them because of how fast they're moving across your screen. And what I think is happening here is that the server is getting slightly desynced from the player a lot. Anybody that played PUBG knows about desync. Uh, what will happen is that the player, you at home, will get a little bit out of sync with the server. This All of this usually happens in less than a second. And the server will either predict or think you're going one, one way and you don't. And all of a sudden, the information that you're sending to the server doesn't match up with the game state that they have on their end. So the server and lag compensation has to choose what to do. And the simple solution to this is to just move the player where they're supposed to be on the server. But what happens is if that happens to an enemy and I'm playing, I will see them in one place and then all of a sudden they're going to start moving super fast to skip ahead to their destination. It's kind of like when you're fast forwarding and bouncing around on YouTube and sometimes you click ahead instead of it just skipping to that part, it'll go and just play all the audio and video like super fast to kind of put it where it's supposed to be. This makes it not very smooth. It makes everything look rough. Even though it might be smooth on their end, it looks really rough on my end. On my end, it makes it hard for me to track targets and sometimes makes people unkillable. Not not immortal. I guess I could get hits on them, but they're moving so fast it seems very unlikely that I would even be able to shoot them. And at the very least, this problem is a gigantic visual and noticeable break from expected reality. We as gamers all know what lag is. We've experienced it. But within some general tolerance, we know how a game should perform and it's supposed to reflect reality and feel kind of like real time. And when you get a big break from that, when you get shoot first, die first, and people like zipping around the map, it's a big expected break from reality and it feels like you're being cheated. This is an issue that I don't have a particular fix for. I don't know, I'm, I'm not a good enough network engineer or a lag compensation specialist to have honestly any clue what to do. All that I can say is that this does need to be fixed because if the final game comes out and people are still on skates, that's gonna be kind of crazy. And I assume a higher tick rate again can help this because if the server ticks faster then ideally they should desync less or at least get updated more often. Perhaps some server maintenance, unplug it, plug it back in, I don't really know.
Number three today is that enemy visibility is bad right now, but it may not be in the future. Visibility seems to have gone down since alpha, and I think that's mostly because of the new field of view settings. As you increase the field of view to see more of your sides, the middle areas kind of have to get smaller. This will quite literally make enemies smaller on your screen and sometimes harder to see. Console players are pretty much not used to having this feature like at all. They really haven't had the opportunity to play with sliders, especially not on Call of Duty. And console players are more likely than PC players to be playing on 1080p instead of 1440p or 4K. And of course, this problem is going to be worse at lower resolutions and then it will at high resolutions. At higher resolutions, 1440 and 4K, changing your field of view doesn't really do much to make the enemies too small or unnoticeable because your resolution's really great, but at 1080p it can sometimes be frustrating. This is an issue that we're running into now that I don't think is necessarily Treyarch's fault. I think they're kind of planning ahead, and I think that with the launch of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and the PC version, that this won't be as much of a problem because they'll have a lot more horsepower to render everything, so you won't have any dynamic resolution dips, which I'm pretty sure I do get some more of those at higher field of views than at lower field of views and you will have more people purchasing 4K TVs and 1440p monitors. So I think this one is more just time and adjustment for the community to get their settings right, to get their monitors right, and get used to this one. Number four, and this one is similar to number three as well, is that the beta drops more frames than I would like. My frame rate seems to dip, uh, especially during gunfights and, and when I'm doing certain things. I have seen reports on Twitter that are wildly inconsistent about people achieving 25 FPS on PS4 Pro and then other people doing 60 on a PS4 regular with various different consoles and settings and I can't really do a math and like plot all this out but broadly speaking a higher field of view does seem to be associated with lower frame rate or more frame drops at least as reported by the community. I assume that this is because the game has to render more for you to see. Again, I'm not a programmer on this one, but I assume it has to render a little bit more around the edges. Is that how that works? Hopefully I'm right on that one. But either way, it is causing something to go screwy. Again, this issue will be greatly alleviated by the launch of newer and more powerful consoles and PC launches because they won't dip frames simply from changing the field of view. Uh, but on older consoles, it's going to be a lot harder. Uh, older consoles, Treyarch, I believe, is going to have to put in some work to better optimize the game. And I think that's going to be very important this particular year because of the crisis we're all facing. And where a lot of us are stuck at home and cash strapped. And as much as digital entertainment is at a very premium, I don't think that there's going to be that many console sales of the new ones. And there's probably going to be a shortage of the new P of like 3080 and 3090 parts for like three or four months, maybe six. I don't know. But I think the majority of players are still going to be on Xbox One Series X, Xbox One X. The Xbox naming is getting confusing and PlayStation 4. So I'd like to see Treyarch spend more time to better optimize the game for the older systems. Number five is that there needs to be more work done to the aim assist. The dead zone settings that they added to the game were nothing short of amazing. Playing with those settings and customizing them can definitely help with the aim assist problem that I'm about to describe, but it's not perfect. And right now aim assist is kind of in a weird place. I didn't have the vocabulary to explain this. I didn't quite know what was going on. And then I saw Elite Shots tweet about it and Elite Shot was of the opinion after playing for 10 or 12 hours that the less you fight the aim assist, the better and more accurate you are. And I didn't quite know what he meant, but I did have that feeling of fighting the aim pulling me in the wrong direction. So I decided not to fight it and let the aim assist kind of pull my controller around wherever it wants to go. And he was completely right. Elite Shot was right about this one. The less I actually aimed and the more I let the sticky aim work for me, the more accurate I was making micro adjustments mid-fight, trying to track targets, uh, leading targets, anything like that, made my guns way less accurate. I got the highest accuracy and best performance simply from trying not to touch my right stick as much as possible. I, The less I touch the stick, the better my guns would shoot. I mean, obviously you have to touch it a little bit. You might have to track an enemy. You might have to readjust slightly. I mean, if people are jumping around bunny hopping you up close, yeah, you have to kind of swing it and turn around and stuff. But broadly speaking, the less I really touch the right stick to aim, 
the more accurate my weapons seemed to be. I got much better performance that way. I was just doing tiny little adjustments and little tippy taps to keep it inside the auto aim zone and let the auto aim do the rest. And I think there's something fundamentally wrong with that. Again, the dead zone settings helped, but they weren't actually the issue. There's something really screwball about the aim assist in the Black Ops Cold War Alpha. And I think that the easiest fix for this, instead of overhauling the aim assist system, would simply be to copy Modern Warfare 2019's aim assist options so that we can just pick one that works, or create a couple of different options, just good, bad, ugly, experimental, whatever, and you can try them out. Maybe you'll find one that works better for you. More options is always better. The last two that I have today are beta specific. Uh, the first it would be number six, a beta specific one, is that leveling weapons in general is super duper slow. One of the reasons that the beta feels so hard right now is that very few players have hardly any attachments on their weapons. It takes about 20 minutes per weapon level or about three levels per hour for each of the weapons in the game. And this was my experience just going from weapon levels 10 to about 25 or so. It's gonna get slower as you go up higher in level. And if leveling guns is this slow in the full game, I'm gonna have to be uploading in depth a lot more slowly. It's gonna take a long time. I think that the beta might feel less annoying if I could actually customize my guns the way that I want. I feel that I'm kind of locked out of having many suppressors. Uh, even the main leveling system's kind of slow, so I'm locked out of a lot of perks and wild cards. And it ends up with uh, basically UAVs and counter UAVs being all powerful and people watching the minimap because you can't suppress many of your weapons unless you're using the default classes. And that's just generally frustrating. I would like to be able to level faster and you know customize my stuff a little bit. Played a lot of beta and I'm still nowhere close to having any weapon fully leveled, which is sad, very sad. Number seven and our last one today is also beta specific. And that's that skill-based matchmaking is weird, or at least beta players are kind of weird. Right now, I know the community is up in arms about skill-based matchmaking again, again, again. I think I might be saying that five years from now. Content creators have many colorful opinions about it. Some of them have boycotted playing the beta or any game that has skill-based matchmaking for that matter. And even though this is a, I guess it's a more critical video, I want it to be super positive, but I have to be, I want to be scientifically accurate and say that I am unwilling to simply say that skill-based matchmaking was cranked up for the beta. I think that a lot of members in the community imagine skill-based matchmaking as like a volume knob on a bass stereo that goes from zero to 10 and they just cranked it up to 11 and they're like, lol, let them deal with it. I don't think that's true because skill matching and matchmaking in general is an extremely complex and complicated process and it took us as a community literally years to get any evidence of skill matching at all, much less uh, any solid evidence of it increasing or decreasing over time. I mean, to get something like that would take 10 times the amount of work and since nobody in their right mind is going to do that, we unfortunately have to rely on feelings instead of facts on this. Uh, we don't have to, it's a choice. It's something to consider. I probably won't rely on feelings, but I will consider them. So it, it, due to the lack of facts on skill-based matchmaking, since there's nothing to measure, I can only say that it feels a lot harder than the alpha. And there is the reality that this is a pre-order bonus beta. So only people that pre-ordered and bought the game earlier playing. And I mostly played during the day on two days where a lot of people would have been at work or at school if they had real jobs or lives or whatever. So I should be playing against a more competitive and less ca casual crowd. I should be playing against some sweats, right? But this has been harder for me than playing against the actual pros. And I, I wanna say this again very clearly, that my public match lobbies versus random enemies all over the world have been harder and more competitive than playing against teams that have like Skump, TP, and Mud Dog, and Nick Merckx all on one team. Those guys play less competitive than the people in my lobbies. I don't, I'm not saying they're bad players. I think a lot of these pros have actually complained about this on their Twitter, and they're saying that, you know, they wish they could recruit people to their teams that played like some of these pub match players. But either way, it's been incredibly challenging. It's been really hard for me to get kills. It's been really hard for me to move forward. And I think that part of that is the shoot first, die first. Part of, part of the reason that the enemies feel so strong and so good and so much like pros is that they are quite literally ahead of you in time because of the lag. So it's incredibly hard to, to kill them or challenge them. You mostly have to shoot them in the back. I think that what we need for skill-based matchmaking is some kind of system overhaul. I don't know what that would entail. 
I don't know what it would be. It's very, it's, I guess it's not a very helpful, positive, constructive criticism or solution, but something is clearly wrong here. Some, there, there, is a, there is an overwhelming amount of feelings and obse, uh, subjective complaints that say that there is a problem here. And just saying that we need to do something is lazy, but I've, I've talked about this subject for many, 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 many years across a thousand videos. So I was gonna say it could be a video all on its own. No, it's already like 10 videos all on its own, 20 maybe on this channel. I just wanna see a change that the community likes that makes my games a little bit more sane, perhaps. I don't mind playing good people. I don't mind playing good people occasionally or even half the time. I don't like playing super good people all this all the time because it doesn't let me do anything fun. And I would like to have a little bit more fun with my beta. Guys, that is all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful about the Black Ops Cold War beta or how to give constructive criticism or how to analyze and think about a problem. Or if you didn't listen to anything that I say, I hope you heard the little message about taking care of your mental health during the last part of this quarantine and crazy year. And I hope to see some of you working out too. Man, working your body is one of the best things you can do for your mind. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.